हेलो डियर फ्रेंड्स माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू हियर आई एम ललित कुमार पी भैया एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड टेलीकम्युनिकेशन इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट भारती कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी दुर्ग डियर स्टूडेंट्स टिल नाउ वी हैव सीन इन द लास्ट वीडियो about the operational amplifier circuits inverting amplifier non inverting amplifier its voltage gain closed loop voltage gain stability etc now we will go today for the another topic of your syllabus also that is integrator differentiator summing amplifier and voltage follower using operational amplifier these integrators differentiators can be prepared using the passive circuit but here we will prepare this integrator we will study this integrator differentiator using the operational amplifier called as the active integrator active differentiator let us see idr operational amplifier and op amp circuit what we have seen this is the inverting and non inverting terminal you know already and this is the output this is the open loop mode where these two inputs are there in open loop case no feedback in open loop v not is equal to this differential gain into v2 minus v1 you can write ad in place of aod you can write ad simply differential gain and this we have also seen input impedance of ideal op amp is infinite and open loop gain of the ideal op amp is also infinite this already we have seen and inverting amplifier non inverting amplifier then we will go for the summing in amplifier integrator and differentiator this inverting amplifier we have already seen this feedback resistance r2 is connected here given to the inverting terminal and this is the input resistors r1 and input v1 is applied to this inverting terminal non inverting is grounded and this is called as virtual ground point due to this ground because of infinite input impedance and infinite open loop gain and the gain of the inverting amplifier which we have seen v not upon v1 vi is supposed to be is equal to minus r2 by r1 or this is minus rf by r1 input resistance is nearly equal to r1 output resistance is nearly equal to r2 so this is about the inverting amplifier this is the example you can see 150 kilo ohm feedback resistance 12 kilo ohm input resistance then gain will be equal to minus this 150 upon 12 kilo ohm that is minus 12.5 minus sign is due to the inverting because this is inverting amplifier this is another example a voltage source vs with source resistance rs is equal to 1.5 kilo ohm is connected to the input of an op amp inverting amplifier circuit if the r1 is equal to 1 kilo ohm and r2 is equal to 15 kilo ohm calculate voltage gain determine the input or output voltage v not for the source voltage vs is equal to 45 millivolt so this r2 by r1 you can calculate 15 divided by 1 and the source is first answer if the r1 is equal to 1 kilo ohm and r2 15 kilo ohm then calculate the voltage gain v not by vs we have to calculate so v not by vs 15 minus 15 divided by a uh, value of rs is given to you 1.5 kilo ohm so 1.5 plus 1 2.5 so 15 divided by 2.5 you can say to so calculate this answer comes to be minus 6 and determine the output voltage when v not is equal uh, for the source voltage vs is equal to 45 millivolt so you can divide it by 45 millivolt here v not by vs so this comes to be a minus 0.27 volt this is non inverting amplifier where the input is given to this non inverting terminal and these are the feedback and input resistances 
and the gain of the non-inverting terminal is 1 plus this Rf by R1 or R2 by R1 here R2 is this one so this gain is 1 plus R2 by R1 this already we have seen now this is voltage follower voltage follower or it is called as buffer amplifier or sometimes it may be referred as a unity gain amplifier here what we will do we will connect the output directly to the inverting terminal without any resistance so here v not follows the v i that is input v not is equal to v1 hence gain is always equal to 1 this is called as voltage follower voltage follower is a special case of non inverting amplifier input is given to the non inverting amplifier here so gain of the non inverting amplifier is v not upon v1 yeah, or v i is equal to 1 plus Rf by R1 and here Rf is equal to 0 it is shorted therefore Rf is equal to 0 so it V0 becomes equal to V1 so it is a special case of non-inverting amplifier this is one more example is shown here a voltage source Vs with source resistance Rs is equal to 5 kilo ohm is connected to the load resistance input of RL is equal to 5 kilo ohm directly and through a buffer amplifier as shown in the figure below. You can see this figure here buffer amplifier that is voltage follower is connected and non inverting is connected with 10 volt Vs with 5 kilo ohm source resistance and load resistance of 5 kilo ohm. Determine the output voltage across the load and the current in the resistance RL for each circuit configuration. So you can use this combination here and you can calculate the output because it is a voltage follower. So voltage will be equal to 1. V0 comes to be 5 volt. Current is 1 milliampere. If V0 is equal to 10 volt, current will be 2 milliampere. This can be easily calculated. Now dear friend, this is one more circuit which is in your syllabus is the summing amplifier. Summing amplifiers means to have the sum of different inputs and calculate the final output. Here three inputs are taken. Let us say VI1, VI2 and VI3 through a resistance R1, R2 and R3 is this is a summing point which is the, whatever the input is available here is applied to the inverting terminal and this is the feedback resistance V0. So we have to calculate the V0 is equal to sum of these three input VI1 plus VI2 plus VI3 like this. Let us consider this current I1, I2, I3 and this is virtual ground point. Since this non-inverting terminal is grounded, so this point is also ground point. So therefore the current flowing through this equal to 0 and hence I1 plus I2 plus I3 must be equal to I4 that is feedback current. So I1 plus I2 plus I3 is equal to I4. So output voltage then becomes V0 is equal to this is the RF resistance so you can put here minus RF because inverting terminal so you can have minus RF into VI1 by R1 plus VI2 by R2 plus VI3 by R3. This is the current I1 plus I2 plus I3 into minus RF. So I4 into RF is the output. So this can be calculated. This is called as a simple summing amplifier which you can study. Now you can see this is the example here. Design a summing amplifier as shown in figure to produce a specific output signal such that V0 is equal to 1.25 minus 2.5 cos omega t volt. Assume that the input signals are V1 is equal to minus 1 volt, VI2 is equal to 0.5 cos omega t volt. Assume the feedback resistance RF is equal to 10 kilo ohm. So these two inputs VI1 and VI2 are given and you have to calculate the output. So simply you go through this equation of the summing amplifier VI1, VI2 plus VI3. Here we have two only minus VI1 upon R1 plus VI2 upon R2. You can put the output here. This is the output equation which is given RF, R1 and R2. You can calculate this, then Rf by R1 comes to be 1.25. That is, R1 comes to be Rf is equal to 10, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.
8 kilo ohm and you can put here and you can calculate the value of R2. So simply this way you can calculate this equation. Other up-amp applications that is important one is the integrator. What is integrator? Integrator is a circuit which provides the output is proportional to the integration of the input. Output is proportional to the integration of the input. Here we will use the active integrator. If we don't use this operational amplifier and we connect the capacitor here and ground it, then it is called as a passive integrator. There exists a loss in the passive integrator. In place of passive integrator, we will use this uh, active component that is operational amplifier and this now circuit becomes the active integrator. This is the source voltage applied, this is the input resistance and this capacitor is connected in feedback. So this becomes the active integrator. Here we can show that this output is proportional to the integration of the input. There may be an integration constant that we will see. R1 is the input resistance, IS is the input current, capacitor is the feedback component, VC is the voltage across the capacitor and IC is the current flowing through the capacitor and this is output. This is virtual ground point because this is ground, this point is also ground. So whatever is the current flowing through this input resistance will be the same in the output uh, feedback component that is 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 equal to IC. So we will calculate here KCL at node G that is a virtual node IS minus I in IS minus I in minus IC is equal to 0. I in is equal to 0 because of the virtual ground and R in is infinite due, due to R, R in infinite. Then IS is equal to IC. I have already told you this IS is equal to IC is equal to VS by R1. Now what is the VC Q by C that is equal to minus V naught. VC is equal to Q charge on the capacitor upon C and that is equal to V naught. So VC is equal to minus V naught but the capacitor charge Q is equal to integration of IS dt that is equal to VS by R1 dt. So output voltage V naught is equal to minus 1 by R1 C integration Vs dt. This R1 you take out common and you can put here Vs. So V0 is equal to minus 1 by uh, minus 1 by R1 C integration Vs dt. If the capacitor has some initial voltage Vx, then you can put here Vx also. Vx minus 1 upon R1 C integration Vs dt. Here Vx is called as the initial condition also. If before applying the input there is any charge on the capacitor then this is called as Vx or you can write V of 0 also that is at time t is equal to 0 this is called as initial condition then uh, this is this, this equation shows that the output is proportional to integration you can see this output is proportional to integration of the input where this 1 upon R1C is the integrational constant are time constant of the integrator. R1C is called as the time constant of the integration. So this output is proportional to the integration of the input. This is called as integrator. This is the example of the integrator. The integrator circuit as shown in figure has an initial voltage Vx. Here initial voltage that is initial condition is given is equal to minus 1.4 volt across the capacitor at time t is equal to 0. A step input voltage Vs is equal to minus 2 volt is applied at time t is equal to 0. Determine the RC time constant necessary such that the output voltage reaches plus 10.2 volt at time 5, t is equal to 5.0 millisecond. This is a simple example of the integrator. So this Vs, this is input, this is capacitor at the feedback and you know V0 is equal to minus 1 upon R1 into C integration of this Vs dt. So you can plug plus Vx supposed to be, Vx is the initial condition. So you can calculate this uh, is the equation which we have seen, Vx is equal to minus 1 upon Rc and values are given here. This is uh, uh, t is equal to 5 millisecond, so you can use here 0 to 5 
Vs. This is the value of T. Integration limit is 0 to 5. So here output voltage is 10.2 volt which is given here. Uh, 10 plus 10.2 volt. So you can put here 10.2 is equal to initial condition is minus 1.4 minus this is minus 2 upon R1C because Vs is equal to 2 volt. So minus 2 volt. Vs is equal to minus 2 volt. So you can take this minus 2. That you can calculate this value. You will get the time constant. R1C is equal to 0 0.862. So this is a good example to calculate the integration time constant from the active integrator. Right. Then the another circuit is the differentiator. You have to just replace the position of the capacitor and resistance. You in place of this input resistance, you can put the capacitor here and in place of the capacitor, you can put the resistance. So in feedback resistance is there and in input capacitor is there. So this will be called as a differentiator. If you don't use this, this resistance will be grounded, then this will be passive differentiator. So in place of passive, we will use the operational amplifier that will use the active differentiator. So what is differentiator? Differentiator produces the output which is proportional to the differentiation of the input. That is V0 is proportional to DDT of Vs. DDT means differentiation of Vs. So here capacitor, the voltage across the capacitor at the input side is Vc. Is is the current flowing through the capacitor. Input current is zero due to uh, input current to the operational amplifier is zero because of the virtual ground and I2 is the current flowing through the feedback. And again here also because I in is equal to zero input current uh, through the operational amplifier is zero. Here no current flows. Again Is will be flowing same here. So Is is equal to I2. You can calculate the current across the capacitor will be the same through the I2 and calculate the output voltage which output voltage is across the R2. So here you can see this I have so, uh, told you I2 is equal to Is because of the virtual ground and uh, voltage across capacitor is already we have calculated Is is equal to dq by dt c into dvs by dt uh, this is the v naught is equal to minus I2 R2 and minus Is into R2 same current is there therefore v naught is equal to you can put Is is equal to minus c dvs by dt so minus c this R2 is there and dvs by dt. What does this indicate? This r2 into c is the differentiation time constant and output is proportional now is the differentiation of this input. v0 is proportional to ddt of vs. So this is called as a differentiator. Right? So this differentiator is also important. In similar way you can uh, see this problem. This is the differentiator circuit shown here and here determine the output voltage of a differentiator circuit, assume that the input voltage V i is equal to 3.5 cos, cos 100 pi t V volts and the time constant is R2 C1. You can so, uh, they write the output equation that is V0 is equal to minus R2 into C1 DDT of V i. Put the value of R2 <coughs> C1 DDT of V i here and differentiate this 3.5 cos 100 pi t you will get 100 pi into sin 100 pi t here and v0 is equal to 1.65 sin 100 pi t volts is the answer so this simple type of problem you can do it calculating gain and design questions in inverting amplifier having a gain minus r2 by r1 or minus rf by r1 non-inverting amplifier AV is equal to 1 plus RF by R1 or 1 plus R2 by R1. Somewhere it may be taken as R2 or somewhere it may be feedback resistance RF. R1 is the input resistance. So summing amplifier output voltage V0 is equal to minus RF VI1 by R1 plus VI2 by R2 plus VI3 by R3. Differentiator output V0 is equal to minus R2 into C1 DV1 by DT. R2 is the feedback resistance C1 is the input capacitor and for integrator V0 is equal to minus 1 upon R1 C2. R1 is the input resistance C2 is the feedback capacitor integration of VIDT. These are the output equation. 
or and if some initial conditions are there are there in the capacitor then you can write v0 is equal to vc minus 1 upon r1c2 integration vi dt so this particular slide shows the outputs are gains output and gains of the inverting amplifier non inverting amplifier summing amplifier differentiator and integrator these are the basic circuits which you have to study so from my um, videos from my last two or three videos you can go through the operational amplifier details also you can see the details in the diagram you can see calculate the input voltage if the final output v0 is equal to 10.08 this is inverting amplifier this is also inverting amplifier this is also inverting amplifier so you have to calculate this input voltage we are if output is 10.8 volt how how you will calculate then it its gain is minus rf by r1 its gain is minus rf by r1 its gain is minus rf by r1 so start from the output side directly output is given so output upon input to this amplifier is equal to minus rf by r1 this calculate the output of this one you can see here how it is this is non inverting amplifier input side is the non inverting this is the non inverting amplifier initial non inverting amplifier then this is inverting amplifier this is also inverting amplifier so to calculate the gain we will go backward output is equal to this minus 100 by 5 into vb this is minus 100 this is 5 this is the vb here this is v a so v not upon vb is equal to minus 100 by 5 therefore v not is equal to minus 100 by 5 vb so vb comes to be 0.504 volt so this vb will be 0.504 volt then second stage vb upon va is equal to minus 5 by 5 vb upon Minus five by five V A. You can put value of V B from this and calculate the value of V A. V A comes to be point five zero four. And then third is the non-inverting amplifier. So V A upon V one, V A upon V one is equal to one plus R F by R one, one plus R F by R one into V one. So you know V A is equal to point five zero four. Calculated here. So V one is equal to point two one six eight volt. So this type of problem, simple problem, very may come in the examination. So you can do this problem. First amplifier is the non-inverting amplifier. The gain of the non-inverting amplifier is V not upon V in is equal to one plus R F by R one, and other two are the inverting amplifier minus R F by R one is the gain. Okay, so you can do like this. Calculate the output voltage if V one is equal to V two is equal to seven hundred millivolt. Here. Again, uh, this is the second one is the summing amp. This is the inverting amplifier, and this is the summing amplifier. Again, you can calculate here. V A value of V A you can calculate. V A is the input of the summing amplifier and output of the first inverting amplifier. So V A is equal to minus hundred by hundred uh, minus five hundred by two fifty into point seven. That is V A is equal to one point five volt, and then calculate the Final output voltage V not is equal to summing amplifier. V not is equal to 500 into V A by 100 plus V two by 50. So V not is equal to comes to be a zero volt here. Like this, calculate the output voltage. You can do the similar type of problems. Here three volt is the output. This this type of problems you can do. so thank you very much for listening this video we will go for the next articles um, of the uh, operational amplifier and other articles here i can say now about our 55% syllabus is covered up to the videos till now 55 to 60% i think uh, completed next we will go the next part of the digital part as well as the instrumentation part and from witness day i will provide you the practicals to be right okay thank you very much thanks a lot